head coach, you always look to see how your team's improving from game to game. And, you know, I look at going from Alabama to Stanford, Stanford to Utah, Utah, you know, now to Arizona State. And each game they've improved. I was so sick over the Utah game yeah. because of what they poured into it. And they brought a business-like attitude, like J.J. said, through the week of practice and then presented it on game day. It was really great to see. You know, talk about that a little bit because it seemed like a different – I mean, same team, mm -hmm. but, you know, just a different mindset in terms yeah. of how they went about their business. Mm -hmm. Is that – an indication of the identity of this team and what this team is compared to maybe some teams in the past with more emotional? Yeah, well, you know, we really preached uh, last week of doing the simple things better, you know, from assignments to communication to lack of poor decision making. And really, all of a sudden, it was the perfect storm. All three phases by far paid, played their best game in, in each phase and, and really put a total team effort together. Well, the phase that I think that's opened up fans' eyes, I mean, I, I talked to you quickly about the first thing about defense because I think that was the most impressive part of that win. But everyone is always going to want to look at this offense and, and how it's changed. How are you seeing teams react differently to you now that all 11 guys really are live on every play? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I think that... Um, you know, offensively right now, there's there's multiple weapons, and you saw nine different receivers catch balls in that game, have a 100-yard rusher, have a 350-yard passer. Balance just came to mind yeah. in that game, and it, it's really opened us up to be able to get the ball to guys like Juju. Uh, Deontay Burnett had a big game, continued throwing the ball to Darius Rogers, Steve. Does what he does for two second game in a row, creating big explosive runs. So it was a great marriage uh, of running. Uh, hopefully we can keep that going. You know, early in the season we talked about how we had to get Juju the ball more, mm -hmm. right, and sort of by design. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't look like you're forcing it to him at all. As a matter of fact, like Deontay Burnett, guys like that are really starting to take off. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also – at the end of the day, been a benefit to Juju as well. He's been able to get his catches. How has yeah. all that sort of worked together mm -hmm. to be to, to get you the greater of, yeah. of both of what well, you want? One of the things that we've seen right off the bat from you know Sam being the quarterback is our run game is multifaceted now. They're having to defend against two runners rather than just one, and it's creating a lot more loaded box situations. Um, I, I knew pressure was going to be coming in that game, but I didn't anticipate as much pressure as we saw, which was a lot, and it was there to be able to stop, one, the quarterback run game and Justin um, and those talented running backs we got. And it just opened up everything in the pass game. Uh, it created a ton of one-on-one -on -one matchups. And I thought between uh, T and Tyson, I thought they put a really good uh, pass game plan together that obviously worked effectively. There's the game plan, and then the ball's live. And this quarterback, I mean – I don't know if he's a gunslinger, but he does like to improvise. I mean, there is sort of a point guard nature to him. I mean, there was a play where I, I, I believe the call was quarterback draw. It wasn't there. All of a sudden, he rises up, yeah. flips one to, I think, I think it was Deontay, and you get a great gain out of it. Even as a young guy, how much do you have to sort of let him just play ball out there and improvise it and use his skills? He reminds me, I reminded Tyson the other day, he's like a great runner. You don't overcoach him because <laughs> he sees things that we don't. I mean, there were a couple plays from that play, which was a design quarterback draw with an RPO tag. He decides on the quarterback draw. It's not there. And then out of the corner of his eye, he sees Deontay and dishes it out. Just to have the arm strength to make that throw is yeah. one. Um, the flea flicker comes to mind to, to have the poise not to panic and pick that ball up yep. and, and then look like Brett Favre out there <laughs> just right. throwing yeah. a sidearm right. down the field. Um, you know, those, those type of things. And then there was a great – one of the better anticipatory throws that I've seen since I've been here to Darius Rogers on the end cut on the two-minute drive where he pulls the trigger, and Darius has not even planted his foot to come out of the break. And when you freeze the shot of where he let the ball go, you're like, who in the world is he throwing it to? And he's throwing to the window that he knows he's going to be in. So his his game maturity right now is so far ahead of where a red should be right now. It's it's fun. It's making us a, gr a good team. Even that uh, one of the touchdowns to Juju, the one where Juju was was wide open, mm -hmm. he was all over the place. He he sort of jumped up, mm -hmm. he hopped, mm -hmm. and he does a lot of pump faking. Which you know, we Sean Cody was talking about this. How much defenses don't mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. He seems to have a great fake, and, and Sean guessed he has big hands. I mean, is he a guy that just has you know? 
the ability to, to really sell yeah, the fake. Yeah, you know, he's he's a guy that uh, does have, have I think, nine-and-a-half-inch hands, so it is a fairly large hand. <laughs> but the other thing is he, he's, he was Cody, too. He was a, his starting point guard uh, yeah. on the basketball team that has to dish, dish it out. And then you could see his vision that comes into play. He sees things that we don't. You're going to start recruiting a basketball yeah, game no, now. No, no, <laughs> Tell no Andy question. Enfield you got uh, it. No question. You'll, you look for him and you look for yourself. No question. <laughs> uh, there's one guy who we didn't talk about a lot during the game. We haven't talked about a lot after the game. Um, but got his first start in Jordan Simmons. And it's a good thing we didn't talk about him because usually you talk about offensive yeah. linemen. It's a bad thing. Yeah. He, he never started a game before, but he comes in, he fills in for Zach Banner. We don't call his name, which I guess is the biggest compliment you can give an offensive mm-hmm. lineman. How did, he, how did he check out? How did he grade out on top? Uh, I, you know, we really credit to both Jordan and Chuma. They split time at that position. And, and I, I gave them great credit in our team meeting today because their preparation through the week, not knowing would they, would they play, would they not, would Zach be healthy. And they prepared like they were going to go in and win that game um, and then get told at, right after pregame warm-up, okay, hey, listen, um, I've watched Zach. He's about 90%. I'm not going to hurt the big man. Um, y'all got it. I got total trust in you. Go, go win the game. And you could just see their faces, just the opportunity to go out there and prove themselves. Um, and I thought both guys, I was really proud of Jordan being the yep. senior that he is to have that opportunity. Um, we gave honor to him to let him start. And then both of them rolled and both of them did a fantastic job. Well, like I said, you know, we're talking a ton of offense, but the challenge was for the defense in this game. This was the highest, this was a team scoring almost, you know, 50 points a game and you held them to six when there was any sort of uh, contest to be played. One guy who I thought really stepped up for you, and, and you will need going forward, that nickel corner is such an important mm-hmm. – you, you need three corners to, yeah. to, to, to play in, in college football against the type of teams you're going to see over the next month or so. Jonathan Lockett, I thought, yeah. played a career game. Yeah, he really did. He you know, stepped up big in that game. He got the experience in the Utah game uh, where he was good, had a couple mistakes, really worked hard at it this week in practice and, and uh, has gotten better with each practice, and it showed up in the game. He, heck, he protected my butt after – you know, fourth and two call and comes right back and makes a big interception. And then uh, fourth and th- fourth and three down about the 45-yard yeah. line, they go for it and uh, and breaks up a pass. You know, that's basically a turnover right there. Yeah. So he, he give him credit. He's, he is uh, dynamic at what he does and a very valuable person in, in nowadays in Pac-12 spread for offenses. Sure. You know, one other thing that was, a, I wouldn't call it a new wrinkle, but it would definitely emphasize more was the fact of all the pressures and mm-hmm. blitzes that you put on Wilkins. It obviously affected the timing of what he was going to do. Um, you, what do you see in terms of the blitz package going forward? Is yeah. that sort of the identity of this defense? Because it really looked good. Yeah, I, you know, I, I give a lot of credit to Clancy. I think the mark of a good coordinator is not to get stubborn it, it, within your system, but develop it for your personnel that you have. And and his system is so vast that he was able to pull some things and say, hey, guys, this is how we're going to get to the quarterback this week. Not only are we going to get better at our four-man rush, which two of the sacks came off a of four-man rush, but the pressures that he gave caused so many hits, so many hurries, and eventually knocked the quarterback out of the game. I, I thought it was credit to him, not only with the pressures, but the multiple personnel that he played. We played a lot of kids at substitution, knowing that we were going to be in an 80-plus game. Yeah, well, that uh, ASU game now in the past. And, you know, when we set the schedule at the start of the season, you think, all right, Colorado at home, there's one. There's one to put in the wing column. Boy, <laughs> the Buffaloes have changed their perception both uh, nationally and, and, and here in the Pac-12. They are contenders, and they come in on Saturday, a 1 o'clock kick. We'll talk about that next with the head coach, Clay Helton. You're listening to Trojans Live on ESPN LA 710. Jackson on Trojans Live. Back on Trojans Live, Jordan Moore, John Jackson, and the head coach, Clay Helton, joining you on ESPN LA 710. And uh, great news, Trojans fans. This week, it was announced that USC ranks number 15 nationally in the inaugural Wall Street Journal Times Higher Education Survey of more than 1,000 U.S. colleges and universities. In the Pac-12, only USC and Stanford rank in the top 25 nationally. UCLA was 26, Cal was 37. So a huge story for all of USC. And... And I'll throw it to you, Coach, because you're the one that goes into these living rooms. Mm-hmm. And I think everyone thinks, so NFL, and that's what you sell. But there are a lot of families, certainly, that 
I would imagine a stat like this is, is very oh, helpful as well. When you go around and you look at it, the combination of elite academics with elite athletics, it just doesn't happen everywhere. And that combination here is extremely unique when you have a tradition of excellence like you have with an athletic program. And now you have unbelievable research facilities that Max and Keith yeah. has built, as well as the faculty that he's brought in, you know, to have one of the top 15 schools in the world right here in, in one of the best places in the world to live in Los Angeles, California. It's a pretty easy so. Right. You know, in t on the same academic side, in terms of being an academic in athletics, um, I know that you preach a lot and you've had a lot of success with graduation rates, mm -hmm. you know, over the years. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was at Academic All-American. I take a lot of pride in that. Mm -hmm. how, how, how is that sort of received nowadays with the current kids? Is that sort of the... The, the bar that they're trying to reach to become that yeah, kind of... Yeah, definitely, because when, when, you ha when you think of USC, what are you? You're a Trojan for life, and that's one of the things. It also, USC, what you don't know is, it ranks 99.5 percentile in job placement. Yeah. You know, so it's not, sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know. And when right. you're a Trojan, you're a Trojan for life, and the network that's here is just incredible. Right. You know, so um, I, it's one of those schools that I absolutely love because it's not just the four-year experience. They're worried about your success for the rest of your life and it's very unique very special we're joined now uh, as well on facebook live as we are each week had some technical issues so apologize to that earlier but uh, you, you're still here for for the second segment with uh, coach helton and and the big game is saturday and it is a big game very much so a, a pac-12 south showdown the the team that's on top of the standings is colorado how have they done it coach because this this really was a, a in fairness, a, a sort of a doormat program in the league when Mike McIntyre came in, and they clearly are not anymore. Yeah. Well, we saw it coming. We could see it last year, if you remember. They were losing close game after close game. We were one of them. And I remember walking away from that game saying, wow, they're doing it the right way. They're recruiting quality athletes, bringing them in, and really developing them. You know, Coach McIntyre did that at San Jose State. Now he's at Colorado. I thought it was a great hire. And he's doing it again. He's got some older kids that have grown up. You look at their defense alone. There's 10 starters. Eight of them are seniors. Um, they're an older bunch, and, and they're, they're a bunch that has grown up under him. And um, he's done a great job, both offensively and defensively. You know, the other thing that's improved about them is it's one thing to have a close game with the Trojans when you're playing at home. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to do it on the road. They played Michigan oh. and Oregon on the road mm -hmm. about as well as you can play both of those teams. Of course, they lost to Michigan. That's and how you know Oregon. it's not a fluke. I mean, yeah. this is a battle-tested yeah. team. They didn't just yeah. get hot on a soft schedule. Yeah. It, 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 can you tell the difference in how they're playing on the road when you watch them on film? Yeah, definitely. You look at the offense right now, and there's so much speed on the field. Shea Fields just jumps out at you, yeah. hometown, hometown product right here. And, and um, he, he's done a terrific job, not only on the deep ball. He's a deep ball threat, but also he's one of those guys that you throw short and he can run long yards after the catch. Um, the, both quarterbacks, we, we'll see which one plays, have done a phenomenal job um, this year. And, uh, you know, on defense, they've done a terrific job in the secondary, recruiting some quality secondary players. And they have three big Polynesian kids that are really, nice, really good yeah. players, all 300-plus pounders <laughs> that hold the point in that 3-4 defense and, and are doing a, doing a terrific job. So, you know, they, they are, they're a battle-tested team. They're a veteran team. They've been in tough games. They've been in tough situations like Michigan and Oregon and have come out successful. And there's, there's a reason they're ranked 21st in the country. Uh, they deserve it. Let me ask you about Shea Fields and our, our lead into the show. Uh, I heard J.B. Long mention uh, that he called Colorado Nelson Spruce's old team. I know, I know you're happy not to see Nelson yes. Spruce. Uh, Dor <laughs> yeah. We talked to a Dory Jackson, and Dory said that was the toughest cover he's had mm -hmm. at, at, at USC. Mm -hmm. And Nelson Spruce was a local guy. Shea Fields mm -hmm. is a local mm -hmm. guy. You can't have every yeah. player, yeah. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you, you wish you could. Mm -hmm. What is your recruiting philosophy in terms of trying to build that fence around your city and your area and also trying to, to cherry pick and, and find great players nationally? How do you build that balance in recruiting? Yeah, you have to because when you look at it, and I remember we did a study about our second or third year here, and I remember the number of 123 Pac-12 players signed from Fresno South. You wow. know that's that's right. a, that's a lot of players, right. and, and you're only going to have 25 of them. So you got to and you got to remember that the players that you don't sign, you're going to play against. So when you <laughs> and sign, they love playing yeah, against. So you. when you so when you sign the 25, you know there better be 20 of them that are close to home, and then the other four to five, if you go to the East Coast, they better be first round picks. They better be a Leonard Williams. They better be a Nelson Aguilar. That's that special quality. So that's the question we always ask ourselves when we go to the East Coast: is you know or national. 
nationally recruit, is this kid have the potential of being a first round draft pick? And, you know, how will he fit in, in coming from thousands of miles away? Um, Leonard and Nelson just fit right in perfectly. Sure. Um, but you try to stay home as much as you can. Um, going back to the two quarterbacks that you're going to have to defend this week, yes. Sefo Lufau who was the starting quarterback to start the year. Of mm-hmm. course, he has game experience. We saw him a year ago. Mm-hmm. And then Steven Montez, the quarterback that's filled in for him mm-hmm. being hurt. I know you have to get ready for both. Yeah. Is there a different game plan, though, for both? Uh, no, they're, they're very similar. They're very similar. Both of them have done great jobs. Bo- both of them start off, they can distribute the ball. That's the first thing that jumps out at you. They're good decision makers. They can find the open targets. They're doing a great job with the RPOs, getting it out on the perimeter. And then both are gr- great deep ball throwers, accurate deep ball throwers. Um, and they do just enough to run them to be able to, so you have to account for them. So it's not like last week where Manny Wilkins was a 13 times a game runner and you had to have that game plan for him. These are guys that you're going to see about four to five runs with them, but mostly they distribute the ball to the skilled athletes. Yeah, you have a skilled athlete in Ronald Jones the second here. You're still trying to get going. I heard you say last night you feel like he's on the edge of a breakout game. Why do you feel that way? Uh, definitely. I just I see it in practice. Um, I, I really feel his progress from day one he's been here till now, um, b- learning pass protection, learning to be a better uh, ball catcher out of the backfield. Um, and he's always been an explosive runner. I just It feels like he's just ready for a breakout game. He's got one problem. He's got a, a guy that's rushing for a lot of yards in each game and breaking and explosive runs in Justin, and he's due. Uh, I really feel that there's that game that's going to come out. We're going to look up and go, yep, there's Rojo. Thank goodness. You know, one other thing we saw last week uh, was it seemed like Clancy went deeper into the depth chart Mm -hmm. in terms of more players participating on defense, um, getting opportunities and Mm -hmm. things of that nature. Is that sort of – did that after you watch that game compared to games Mm -hmm. before, games prior – is that sort of the way you think this is going to go? Yeah, because we've made that transition. You know, you had Alabama and Stanford early, which are huddle football teams where you're in that 65, 60 to 65 play a game. Now you get into these spread no huddle tempo offenses, and it could be 80, 85, 90 plays. And, and that's hard on one player to be able to do that, plus two special teams if they're in it. So you really have to do a great job of substitution. And I thought Clancy did a really nice job of substituting everybody from, you know, putting um, Quentin, Quentin in on third down for Cam, Rose rotating the two free safeties, putting different edge players to give Chinna and Porter a little bit of break, interior players. Josh Fatu on Rasheem Green sack actually forced the quarterback right into the Rasheem, but you could see the quick twitch freshness that he had on a third down pass rush. So I, I give credit to Clancy. I thought he did a great job of substitution versus a team that could put a lot of plays up. I'll, I'll let you go on an easy one, Coach. You know, each week for home games, you have a special guest sort of lead, a great Trojan lead the team out of the tunnel. Now, this week... It- it was it was the the Olympian the sprinter Allison Felix. Yeah. Now sometimes they just take off, they get give a wave to the crowd. She didn't want to do that, no. so then she ends up running with you, Coach. Did you I, feel like you had to really stride it out to keep up with her? I was I, watching you. It looked like you took what, the field a little I, quicker than I, usual. I, I was scared to death. I was going to pull a hamstring. <laughs> I was trying to keep. I was trying to keep up. She was jogging and I was sprinting. <laughs> oh boy! All right, Coach. We'll see if we can find somebody a little more. JJ's pace yeah, is just yeah, wanting to jog no, it out this why week. Why don't we do JJ? That'd be, that'd be a hell of a race. Yeah. <laughs> well, that'll, that'll kick it off. We look forward to see who comes out of the tunnel. And the, we know the Trojans will, and they, they, they better. They got a big one this Saturday. 1 o'clock, uh, Coach back in action at the Coliseum. USCTrojans.com slash tickets. Get your tickets to this one, a Pac-12 South showdown. Back for more, it's the star wide receiver, Juju Smith-Schuster, fresh off a hat trick of touchdowns against Arizona State, next on Trojans Live.